part of the Kuala Lumpur summit because they believed if Imran Khan went and attended, Imran Khan would lend a Muslim legitimacy to this conference that was designed to rebuke the de-Islamization policies of UAE and Saudi Arabia, which were looking to introduce alcohol, into looking to introduce OnlyFans model concerts, which were looking to introduce casinos into those areas. The Saudis, they threatened Imran Khan. They said, Wallahi, if you go to Kuala Lumpur, we will cut our investments to Pakistan and we will kick out the Pakistanis from Saudi Arabia and you can deal with it. Pakistan must be dependent on us. It cannot be equal to us. Imran Khan, the potential that he was about to bring in terms of establishing an independence. Remember, at every OIC meeting, Imran Khan would bring up two topics. Kashmir and Palestine. The reason that troubled Saudi and UAE so much, there are many people who think Imran Khan was just words. If he was just words, Saudi UAE would not have celebrated his toppling, nor would the US representative have said to the establishment in Pakistan, get rid of him and all will be forgiven. The Imran Khan's words were having such an impact, the way your words are having an impact on Biden, Blinken, and the shift in public opinion, that Imran Khan was bringing up Kashmir at a time in which Saudi and UAE were trying to get warmer ties with India. Remember, when, Modi's, when Indian Prime Minister Modi's official insulted the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and Sayyidina Aisha anha, Modi panicked so much that he issued an unprecedented statement. He said, we respect all religions. His party had never made a statement like that in their entire history. They commissioned an article in Oman and other Arab capitals, desperately trying to defend Modi and saying Modi had kicked out the official. Modi was worried that there would be a boycott and that the Muslim nations would punish India. Guess which country bailed Modi out and invited him to their capital to tell him, don't worry, this issue doesn't matter to us, ignore the Muslim anger. It was the United Arab Emirates. When Bin Zayed received Modi and told him, Ta'ala, come, and they hugged him, and they built a temple in UAE last week to show we're moving beyond Islam and Muslim causes, where now we want warmer ties, we don't really care about these issues. Imran Khan was making them sign on papers, telling them that they respect Kashmir's right to independence at a time in which they didn't want to upset India. So they were getting annoyed. Imran Khan kept bringing up Palestine at the OIC and making Saudi and UAE sign on a commitment to Palestinian liberation at a time in which UAE and Saudi were trying to get close to the Israelis. They told Imran Khan, listen, calm down, bro. I'm trying to get close to India and Israel. Why do you keep bringing up these issues? Why do you keep talking about it? The Saudis were getting them not to talk about it. We brought Iggy, Zalia and Shakira and Mariah Carey to get them to forget about Palestine Kashmir. Why are you bringing it up in the OIC? The UAE said we're building casinos and the like to make them forget about Palestine and Kashmir. Relax, why do you keep talking about it? Take a few million and shush. And Imran Khan said, I'm not gonna shush. Then Imran Khan made the greatest crime in Pakistan. He tried to appoint a chief of staff of the army and appoint an intelligence chief, which is the democratic right of any elected leader. But in Pakistan, apparently it's haram. It's, it's layer Jews. So they panicked and they kicked him out of power. When they kicked him out of power, you who believe yourselves to be ordinary, do you know why they couldn't arrest him? Because thousands of Pakistanis took to the streets. They tried to arrest him in Zaman Park, they couldn't do it. They tried to, uh, they, they said, let's hold by-elections just to get rid of PTI. They did the by-elections, PTI won a landslide election in the largest province in Pakistan, in Punjab. Then they panicked and they said, yeah, ilahi ilal, what's going on over here? Then PTI, they tried to pull a nice move. They wanted to dissolve the assembly of Punjab to force general elections. The establishment said, whoa, 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 whoa. They said, we're not holding uh, general elections. We're going to appoint a new assembly. And then they went to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court said, no, you have to hold elections. They said, toz for Supreme Court. We're not uh, respecting the Supreme Court. The reason they couldn't arrest Imran Khan was because people were getting like Arab accounts were talking about Imran Khan. They were raising awareness saying, dude, what's happening to Imran Khan? He's being attacked only because he's suddenly raising the awareness. But ya ibadallah, let me tell you something phenomenal about these Pakistani brothers and why I believe the ummah is alive. I refuse to believe the ummah is weak. The establishment spent two years preparing to rig the elections to ensure that Imran Khan would be eliminated from the scene and PTI. They got him in prison, they arrested him because on May 9th, some installations were burnt. Some Pakistanis, they got scared suddenly and they went home. 
I don't know why, but in any case, it is what it is. They arrested Imran Khan. They threw 250 charges. They found something about his marriage. Apparently, the wife didn't wait for Idda period or something. Something was so ridiculously disgusting that the way they did it. But in any case, they put him in prison and they tried to rig the elections. But this is the point I was making about social media. When I said earlier that they can shadow ban thousands of accounts, they can't shadow ban millions. They can't shadow ban millions of accounts. They can't shut down millions of voices. Because when they tried to rig the elections, what the Pakistanis did was they went and voted for independents who are from Imran Khan's party. And they came first. No one, they started rigging in broad daylight. I went to bed and there was somebody leading with like 180,000 votes. I woke up the next morning, they reduced it to 90,000 votes. It was rigging in broad daylight. But they were so clumsy at rigging that even international media came out and said it's clearly a rigged election. The reason I give you this context is one, please read about what's happening in your ummah. Please learn about what's happening in your ummah. Please start to take an interest in the communities in your ummah. Please learn to talk about your ummah the way you talk about American football or basketball or the like. Please learn about your ummah and learn about... But also, in my opinion, if Imran Khan was in power, I think there'd be a much louder voice for Palestine. I think if Imran Khan was in power, there would be a greater shift in the Muslim world that Erdogan would be encouraged to pursue as well. So would Malaysia and the like. I think that Imran Khan in those three years showed what a potential huge change can happen in the Muslim world. That's why I believe he was toppled. But more than anything else, it's not about just about Imran Khan. What we're seeing in Pakistan is a revolution by the people to push back against an establishment to say to them absolutely clear, Pakistan was not supposed to serve an establishment, it was supposed to serve the Pakistani people. And for those who say, Sami, but all this is just Pakistan, what does it have to do with me? Ibadallah, I'm proof of it. I'm an Arab. The reason I know so much of what's happening in Pakistan, including the fact they kidnapped a guy called Usman Dar for 20 days. And then he pops up after 20 days on TV, and says, Imran Khan told me to go burn military installations. So like clumsy the way they did it. Why does an Arab know this? Because Imran Khan's message resonated. Why does an Arab know this? Because Imran Khan made Pakistan relevant to us. Imran Khan showed us a vision where Pakistan is a key part of the Ummah. And I as a Muslim who resonates with the Ummah, I said, you know what actually? Sumaya, do you think it's worth going to Hanza Valley? Why don't we go visit Islamabad and Karachi? Why don't we go put our money in Pakistan? Imran Khan sounds like he's got some good ideas like to bring the Muslims together. Let's go and support him. We won't go to, you know, Switzerland or the like. Let's go and see what Pakistan is like. He was shifting the way that we thought about Pakistan, shifting the way that we thought about the Ummah. And that's why, Ya Ibadallah, let no one ever tell you that words don't matter. Let no one ever tell you that symbolism doesn't matter. Let no one ever tell you that words doesn't matter because it does, because it affects change and it causes a shift that results in a series of consequences that results in new opportunities. Pakistan now is in a battle. They are desperately trying to make sure that Imran Khan doesn't form a government. They tried to get the two parties who were the beneficiaries of the rigging to form an alliance. There are people who won because of rigging who have resigned their positions openly saying, I won because of rigging. I don't want to take my position like that. Pakistan is in chaos. If you want to do something for Pakistan, go and tweet about it. Go and talk about it. Go and raise awareness about it. Go and lend your voice to them. For wallahi, your voice is what upsets the establishment because they've been humiliated so much so that the US, which was happy to see Imran Khan topple, has issued a statement saying that it's expressing concern about what's happening in Pakistan. They're not actually concerned. They are rather trying to leave a way open in case Imran Khan comes back to power. There's a chance that he might. But the Ummah needs to rally. The same way that you saw you can make a difference on Gaza, you can make a difference on any issue related to the Ummah. Learn about Sudan. Learn about Pakistan. Go and learn it. You learn about so many other things. What's stopping you from going to learn and teaching your kids that these things matter? For Wallahi, these borders are artificial. The Ummah is one. And the proof is that Allah in the history of Islam the liberation of Al-Quds was done by Umar al-Khattab, the Arab, and by Salah al-Din, the Kurd, and Constantinople fell to the Turk. And we have the most profound scholars in our history, like Baba Ahmed from the West African kingdoms. And we have some of the greatest poets and scholars from modern day Pakistan and India. And we have the Mughals, and we have those from Malaysia and India. Every single ethnicity contributed to Islam because for them, Islam was not ethnocentric. Islam was beyond that. Islam was anybody who said, I'm a Muslim. That's why our armies were composed of people from everywhere. Ibadallah, when did the Ummah start believing these borders that were made? Let's look beyond it. Let's learn about it. Because wallahi, in my opinion, if the Pakistanis win in Pakistan, there will be a domino effect on the rest of the Muslim world, inshallah. Takbir. Takbir.